Hello and welcome to Animal Weapons. In the last episode, we looked at weapons which were small, devious and deadly. In this episode, we move to the more brutish. Horns, teeth, claws and tusks. From the menacing jaws of the great white shark to the magnificent tusks of the elephant. What makes these weapons so specialised and why are they critical to the species' survival? <laughs> Teeth, gnashing, tearing, grabbing and slicing. They are perhaps the most versatile of all animal weapons. Their shape and form is a product of their function. While some creatures use them in unison with other weapons, for others, they are their front-line offensive. But for a predator to sink its teeth into its victim, it must first have it within reach. To do this, crocodiles have become masters of ambush. The largest reptiles on Earth. Crocodiles are scaly beasts that lurk in the interface of air and swamp. Using a strategy of minimum exposure, only their vital sensors reveal their presence. Like all reptiles, they are air breathing and have nostrils perched high on the snout. Their sense of smell is acute, as is their binocular sight. With the most advanced ear in the reptile world, they hear over a wide range of frequencies. A third transparent eyelid slides into place their nostrils seal as they submerge without a ripple. While there are 13 different species of true crocodiles found throughout the equatorial regions of the world, in Australia's tropical north, we find the saltwater crocodile, surviving relatively unchanged since its prehistoric origins. The saltwater crocodile is the largest of all the world's crocodiles and the largest living reptile on Earth, reaching lengths of up to seven metres. This one is only about 30 centimetres long, about one twentieth of its potential length. Its eyesight, hearing, sense of smell and touch are all highly developed. And while these sensory weapons are used to find their prey, when it comes to capturing prey, it's their extraordinary body design and their grabbing and tearing teeth that are really put into action. More than 60 sharp conical teeth intermesh. They are designed for penetration and holding rather than chewing and cutting. The jaws can close with a force capable of crushing bones and skulls. Basking is important to heat the brain and fine tune the senses. Despite their massive size and weight, they move fluidly and discreetly through the shallows, propelled by a powerful tail. Water holes are vital for these birds. At this time of year, it is both their breeding and feeding ground. Crocs need only to patrol the shores to find their next meal which may be an unsuspecting heron or a mammal as large as a water buffalo.
Navigating from memory of where prey was last seen, they make their approach undetected. If the prey has moved, they simply adjust their course and try again. When on target, they explode out of the water in a surprise attack. Once seized, victims have little chance of escape. Here in Africa's Tanzania, it's the start of the dry season and the wildebeest are restless. The succulent grasslands are gone, forcing them north in search of rain. Accompanied by zebra, they journey over a thousand kilometers to the Masai Mara in southern Kenya. It's a journey fraught with obstacles. Swollen rivers must be swum, rivers lined with crocs. Over six meters long, the Nile crocodile rivals the saltwater croc in size and bulk. A more social species, they bask side by side on the banks of Kenya's Mara River. Every year, they take advantage of the migration and the bounty of prey that it brings. Hundreds of wildebeest die in their attempt to cross this perilous river. Their strategy is to cross in armies of thousands. One trampled, drowned or taken by crocodiles, thousands survive. For the individual, its greatest weapon is in numbers. They may have survived the river crossing, but for this herd, the journey and the dangers are far from over. The migration is a boon to other predators also armed with teeth as their weapons of destruction. Lions are quick to follow their passage, waiting for the weak and injured to straggle. With teeth at the ready, they make their move. The African plains would seem like a banquet for carnivores. But while prey is plentiful, so too are predators. To take a share in the moving feast, it pays to be larger, faster, stronger, or 
perhaps simply an opportunist. With the support of your clan. While hyenas will hunt, they are master scavengers. They move independently or en masse, stealing whatever they can from kills made by others. Their strong forequarters enable them to scurry off with massive weights firmly in their jaws. Their specialized crunching weapons allow them to benefit from the remains of a lion's feast. While lions rip away flesh, they are incapable of dealing with bones. But hyenas' teeth and jaws crush bones with ease and with great speed. They can eat a third of their own weight in one sitting. It is this succession of teeth that ensures that few remnants are left of a beast that may have fallen only an hour before. While hyenas are the most notorious scavengers on earth, what is little known is that there is a marsupial equivalent of the hyena that lives in Tasmania. While only one-tenth the weight of a hyena, the Tasmanian devil has much in common, including the weapons it shares. Relative to their body size, they have the strongest crushing jaws and teeth of any mammal in Australia. Within their mouths is a weapon designed for every part of the job. Bones are cracked on the pair of second molar teeth. Such is the wear on these teeth that they are reduced to a blunt stump by the time a devil is three years old. The third and fourth molars are the weapons designed for slicing meat and remain sharp throughout their life. Like the hyena, this is a mouthful of weapons designed for scavenging. dinner is accompanied by much jostling and ritualized displays of aggression. Success depends firstly on who has the largest mouthful of teeth. But attitude also plays a role and larger devils may back off from smaller pugnacious ones. Submission is expressed by an open mouth, crouching stance, and a raised tail, or simply by making yourself scarce. While devils will take live prey, their role as scavengers is very important to the ecology of these forests. Probably no other creature is so dependent on teeth as weapons as are sharks. Their teeth vary slightly in shape according to what they eat. Those that feed on large, fast-moving prey have teeth that are pointed, serrated and extremely sharp. While shark's teeth are among the most feared, it is an African mammal 
which have those that are the most highly coveted. The elephant's tusks are in fact greatly enlarged incisor teeth and undeniably the largest and most spectacular of all teeth in the animal kingdom. They lack the canine teeth of carnivores, for elephants are herbivores and require massive amounts of food daily to sustain their bulk. In fact, 14 hours a day are spent processing their fibrous diet between their six sets of molar teeth. Their giant tusks serve another purpose. For the most part, elephants use their tusks as useful tools, digging up roots and stripping bark from trees and sometimes gently nudging their family members along. But at certain times of the year, they become lethal weapons as males fight each other for sexual dominance. Younger individuals mock fight and charge more often. While these bouts may be rehearsals for challenges in later life, they also establish a pecking order. While a bull elephant will slow his growth on reaching maturity, his tasks continue to increase in length and width throughout life. Young males use their size and tusk length to establish a place in society, challenging individuals by trying to get into the taller position and interlocking tusks to compare length. When they separate, the first to run is usually the defeated contestant. Hippopotamus, too, have teeth that continue to grow throughout life, and some that reach tusk-like proportions. It is their upper canines and lower middle incisors which are greatly enlarged. Like elephants, a hippo's tusks serve a social function rather than a predatory one, for they too are herbivores. Being largely immune to predation, hippos have the most to fear from others of their own kind, especially at certain times of the year. Well, it's the wet season now in Africa and the rivers are flowing freely and the hippos are happy. But with the arrival of the dry season, the water holes dry up and the hippos are forced to move on and fight for their space. Aggression is at its most intense when living conditions are crowded and females are in estrus. Dominant bulls defend their patch of the waterway and their females, only tolerating other bachelor bulls if they are submissive. <laughs> Threats are displayed by water scooping, yawning, and showering others with feces. Those that challenge ruling bulls are attacked with great ferocity, with the loser often suffering deep wounds. Their reputation of being among the most dangerous of all African creatures has earned them almost total immunity from predators.
Australia is home to the majority of the world's marsupials. Most, like the koala, seem placid and even playful. They are well adapted to life in the trees. Even a mother with a back young has no trouble scaling the tall trunks. While they lack a grasping tail, they do have extremely sharp gripping claws. Their razor-sharp incisor teeth are for slicing through twigs and leaves. Even at this age, their claws are long and sharp enough to pull themselves vertically into the treetops. But when it comes to the serious mating game, teeth and claws are put to work as weapons of attack and defence. This female successfully rebuffs a male she considers unsuitable, preferring to mate with the strongest male in her group. He is usually the biggest, weighing up to 12 kilograms. He maintains exclusive mating rights over all four females in this group. And constantly defends his title against younger males. But there are some that defy his authority. The alarm calls of one of his females rouses his attention. In a bold move, a younger rival has cornered one of the females. The dominant male must defend his mating rights or lose his position. The paternity of this female's young will depend on the outcome. The sharp teeth and claws of both males are capable of inflicting deep wounds. This time, the rival has been vanquished and retreats. The dominant male retains his title and the female encourages his advances. Mating with the strongest male gives her young the best chance of survival. For now, his strength and weaponry have ensured he is still the undisputed leader. For koalas, the ability to fight with tooth and claw is critical in the social fabric of their lifestyle. Well, so much for the cute and cuddly reputation of the koala. It seems that they do have another side after all. These gripping claws are not only used for scaling trees, but also for attack and defence. And combined with their razor-sharp teeth, make for formidable weapons. But it's not a combination that's unique to koalas. The brown bears of North America use theirs to secure a meal. <laughs> bears are annual visitors to the shores of Alaska's Nanak Lake. Weighing as much as 450 kilograms and armed with gripping teeth and claws, brown bears are the world's largest land-dwelling carnivores. In the wild, they are challenged only by others of their kind. Their weapons are versatile. Here, among the bounty of migrating salmon, 
Their teeth and claws are used with dexterity rather than force. They have become highly effective fishing tools. Mothers share their catch with their young. It's here that they will learn just what their weapons are for. For the moment, their teeth and claws are merely playthings. But this frolicking is an important rehearsal for later life. In the future, these bears will have to fight for prime fishing positions. But their teeth and claws have another purpose. And it's time for their mother to teach them the finer points of fishing. She leads them towards the falls upstream, where the narrow neck of water means more fish to the meter. By this stage in the season, the dominant males have left. The grandmother of them all sits patiently on her self-proclaimed salmon lookout. She employs a sit-and-wait strategy, conserving her energy. Others actively search for salmon, held stationary by the force of the current. Agile she may not be, but her years of experience serve her well. With Grandma out of the way, others move into more favourable positions. They leap on their prey in hit and miss attempts. In a river so rich, they may catch 10 to 20 salmon per day and build the fat reserves they need for the coming six months of winter hibernation. For the cubs, it's their second season at the falls but the last time they will have maternal guidance. Not yet experienced enough to catch enough salmon of their own, the cubs share their mothers. Packed with proteins and fats, each fish represents 4,600 calories. Cubs must feed well and learn quickly, for in the coming years they will be forced to find food for themselves and use teeth and claws to fight for their position on the river. The claws of hunting birds are known as talons. While their beaks are an imposing feature, it is their talons which capture and kill prey. The wedge-tailed eagle can accurately sight its prey from great distances, even when soaring a kilometre in the sky. They also make low-level attacks. The 
wedgetail is Australia's largest bird of prey, with wings spanning over two metres. in their feet are extremely strong, able to exert more than two tons of crushing power. The needle-sharp claws pierce straight through the skin to the bones, giving them a vice-like grip. It is then that the beak becomes a weapon to tear the prey into bite-sized pieces. While most mammals have teeth of various designs to deal with their food and to fight among themselves, birds typically have beaks as their primary weapon. The beak of this wedge-tailed eagle and other birds of prey are designed for ripping and tearing once they have caught their food. But in the bird world, you find an extraordinary array of beak designs, each suited to its particular food type and habitat. There are more than 9,000 different species of birds found the world over. Each has a beak as a weapon. Water birds like the heron have a stabbing beak for procuring fish in muddy shallows. The grasping beak of the bee-eater snatches insects from the air, then doubles as a set of tongs to manipulate its catch. The feet of the secretary bird does the attacking, while its beak does the collecting. Many birds use their beaks as harvesters and movement detectors, scouring muddy waters for bottom-dwelling fish. The longer the beak, the deeper they can probe. The wider the beak, the greater the size of fish they can devour. Whatever their shape, each bird has a weapon ideally suited to the task at hand. This is Heron Island on the tropical Australian coast, a favourite nesting site for green turtles. Literally hundreds of thousands of turtles have been born here in these sands. But perhaps only one in hundreds survives to become adult and breed themselves. For as babies, they have to run the gauntlet of teeth and claws, those weapons that bring a rapid end to their short lives. And while the turtle breeding season is over here, on the other side of the world, in Costa Rica, it's in full swing. It's
It's for this reason that thousands of beaked predators and scavengers gather around this remote beach in South America's Costa Rica. They congregate here in anticipation of one of nature's remarkable events. Somewhere beyond the breakers, an awesome reptilian armada is slowly making its way to shore. The arrival, or la arrobada in Spanish, is the synchronous mass nesting of more than 150,000 olive ridley sea turtles, the largest such gathering on the planet. Having migrated for months across thousands of kilometers of ocean, this female has finally arrived on one of the five known Arabada beaches. Forced to lay her eggs on land, she makes her way through the gauntlet of waiting beaks. Among them, black vultures, scavengers rather than hunters. Their hooked beaks rend flesh from bone. Their heads and necks are featherless to avoid soiling while feeding. Wood stalks towering a metre high have arrived, their massive beaks armed with rough cutting edges. Smaller, feisty caracaras are here, flaunting their hooked beaks and kicking feet. Weighing about 45 kilograms and protected by massive shells, healthy adult turtles have little to fear from these marauding scavengers. It is her eggs and offspring that are in their sights. Hind flippers excavate the flask-shaped egg chamber. It is now ready to receive a clutch of about a hundred soft-shelled eggs. For their protection and incubation, she covers them before heading back to sea. Immediately, her nest is plundered. Once opened, vultures take their spoils, using their piercing beaks to penetrate the membranous shells. They gorge on the remains of one turtle which failed to make it back to the ocean. Some 65 days later, the hatchlings that survived the pillaging emerge and make their perilous dash from nest to surf. Barely four centimetres long, not more than one in a hundred will make it to the water. For the vultures, they are easy targets. Scissor-sharp beaks can decapitate a hatchling cleanly. A swift kick to the head robs this vulture of its prize. Despite their smaller size, caracaras readily harass vultures. One of the falcon family, these opportunistic hunters have sharp curved claws and powerful hooked beaks with cutting edges. but the wood stalks are second to none. Their massive beaks make small work of the defenseless hatchlings. 
Despite losses, some hatchlings do make it to the sea. Only to face a new host of predators. Now, the pelicans have their chance. Diving from heights of up to 10 metres, the brown pelican uses its huge throat pouch to engulf hatchlings. They are the only members of the pelican family to dive for prey. Last in the gauntlet of beaks, pelicans, like each of the predators along this shore, have developed unique and sophisticated weapons to avoid competing directly with each other and to feast in a time of plenty. From South America's Costa Rica to here on Australia's Heron Island, Daily, species run the gauntlet of beaks, claws and hungry mouths that wait here in the shallows of the Great Barrier Reef. Yet despite this constant struggle for survival, species thrive here on one of the most complex ecosystems in the world. Living proof that no weapon is designed to totally decimate another species. In the next episode of Animal Weapons, we focus on the weapons of horns, used not only to secure prey and defend against predators, but also to win a place in the social hierarchy. I hope you can join me for that episode. That's all. Goodbye for now.